that have been corroded significantly. And that's the result of, that we've learned as a result of the engineering study that was done. Uh, there are several places also where the concrete abutments that support those I-beams are not in contact with them. Uh, and you don't have to be an engineer to know that that doesn't sound good, and it isn't. Um, what we don't know yet is what the condition of those concrete abutments is below the surface of the water. So that's something that stands in front of us as we go forward. Uh, have I mentioned my technical ability to you? There we go. All right. You got to point it at it and push hard. If I forget again, will somebody remind me of that? Uh, in any event, the most important part of that slide is that last bullet. We don't know yet what we don't know, and we will not know that until the water level is lowered and we're able to determine what the status of the concrete abutments might be. All right. Yeah, backwards is a good idea. I'm going to show you. Yeah, push harder. Point. Push harder. Call for. May I phone a friend? All right. Will you, well, Rob, will you stand up so in the back so I'll remember to point it at you, perhaps? Huh? All right. Here's a picture uh, that the engineer showed to us April 1 of the condition of at least one of the steel girders, the I-beams that goes on, go underneath it. Well, I may say a bad word in church here pretty soon. All right, ho, concrete abutments. That's a problem and that's part of what we can see above the water level, what needs to be determined now is what's below the water level. Obviously, this is on the lake side of the dam, uh, and that's work that needs to be done. So the task force considered a number of options. When we were together April 1st, uh, we discussed four specific options uh, that, uh, and after that meeting, the task force, frankly, uh, reduced the number from four to two based on the conversations that we had and other things as well. And these are those two. Uh, the first option is to restore the bridge to vehicular traffic and pedestrian traffic. In other words, restore the bridge to its historic uh, condition. And the second was an examination of the feasibility, possibility of simply doing away with vehic vehicular traffic uh, and go only to a pedestrian uh, bridge. We talked about those options in some depth in, uh, in April, and at this point, uh, the restoration of the bridge uh, will, we don't know exactly, we've gotten an, an estimate from the engineer and the estimate is between 1.4 and 1.7 million dollars. The difference has to do with the condition of the I-beams and the uh, abutments, and we won't know all of that until we lower the water and are able to determine the concrete abutments condition, and we've got to take off the wood layers on the road itself in order to examine the I beams. I mean, does that make I mean it makes sense to me? Does that uh, so 1.7 is kind of a worst case. Uh, we have the opportunity to improve on that significantly depending upon what we find uh, with regard to the condition of the I beams once the 
uh, roadway is removed itself and then uh, what the condition of the abutments might be uh, underwater once the water itself is lowered. The pedestrian uh, only was about $750,000. So those were the two options that were considered by the task force. At this point, on a preliminary basis, the task force is focusing on a recommendation to restore uh, the bridge over the dam uh, to both vehicular traffic and to pedestrian traffic. Um, that's where we are as a preliminary determination and the rationale uh, for that includes the fact that that east gate and the road over the dam are, I mean that's been around almost a hundred years um, and that's the historic entrance. The idea would be to restore it so that you could circumnavigate the lake, um, not only walking but uh, driving as well. The uh, signage uh, is a, a problem, not an insurmountable problem, but it's a hassle factor because that's the way the highway department and GPS uh, has you come in at this point. Obviously, eventually that could be taken care of, but that is a near-term issue. Uh, perhaps the, one of the more important reasons for the task force's recommendation at this point is concern about uh, increased traffic on county road, uh, safety uh, on uh, using county road, and also the significantly increased traffic on uh, South Lakeshore. Uh, in any event, um, the, the question then that is uh, before us is how do you pay for it? Um, and the, the notion is this. <clears throat> the task force will make its recommendation to the board at this meeting July 1, next Saturday, as I said to you. It will be the responsibility of the board and administration to come up with a plan to uh, finance that, to respond to that. And part of that will be, it's not done yet, but I'm telling you, part of that will be uh, seeking charitable gifts and grants um, to help defray some of those costs. Uh, some of it also, the residual, will need to come uh, from the streets portion of the service charges that all of us as landowners uh, pay each year. Our thought at this point, not yet final, but our thought at this point is time can work in our favor. In other words, if we spread these service charge, uh, this over a 10-year period of time, we can keep any amount of increase small, but that's the working assumption at this point. Part of this plan uh, that will need to be uh, developed will involve cash flow. I mean, you, you're going to do the work on the front end, and the monies from the service charge and perhaps the monies from grants and certainly monies from charitable contributions may not all come in on day one. So we'll have to uh, have a plan that is in all likelihood going to require a significant borrowing of money uh, by Lake Junaluska. Uh, borrowing on the strength of the service charges over a period of time uh, paying it back. Uh, that's yet to be fully developed, but I want you to know that Cash flow and the ability to borrow will be a part of that uh, as well. Um, now, kind of a, on an unsolicited basis, we've received uh, $12,000 toward this project already. Uh, and that's great. That's a start. Uh, we don't really have a project until we have a board meeting July 1 and have approval of the task force recommendation, uh, final recommendation, and the beginning of a charge to administration and the board to develop this plan for uh, financing. Um, in, a, in addition to that, 
great news. We've got a family foundation and a couple that have pledged $150,000 toward this effort, toward restoring the bridge to vehicular and pedestrian traffic. The idea is those funds would be matchable. In other words, if you gave $100, we would pull down $100 out of that $150,000 that has been pledged uh, by a family foundation and a, and a family. And I know them both. And they're good for it. And that's terrific. And I'm married to one of them. <laughs> Just one. In addition, uh, we've got a another very strong possibility of an additional one hundred and fifty thousand uh, dollars pending uh, from an organization that I'm not at liberty to divulge the identity of, but the leadership of that organization is prepared to recommend a hundred and fifty thousand uh, dollar pledge in a, in a challenge way. Wow, terrific, terrific news as well. In addition to that, We'll have the board of directors, board of trustees rather, uh, consider uh, use, making a significant six-figure contribution from unrestricted funds that Lake Genaluska has. More good news. More good news. So, what we've got to do uh, also then is to uh, seek additional gifts from people that use the lake, uh, people that love the lake, uh, I mean, things in addition to those of us who just happen to own property here or live here, but people that use, come here, love this lake, we need to appeal to them, and that's going to be part of a plan, uh, a development plan uh, that I'll talk about in just a minute. We also want to reach out to uh, churches and others uh, to that have some kind of connection uh, now or in the past with Lake Junaluska and would recognize this as a very, very worthy project that they might like to support. Uh, so it's going to be a multifaceted approach, a multifaceted approach uh, to the funding uh, challenges that we face. Uh, now, I mentioned grants and, and we want to seek grants. Uh, we want to uh, both identify organizations, entities that are grantors that might be interested in uh, the wellness aspect of things and appreciate being able to walk all the way around the lake is a good thing. Um, we think that we don't know the limit of those, uh, but we do know a couple of possible uh, that are right here in the local area. And we're going to find as many of them as we can. One of them, for example, is Haywood County Recreation Grants. Uh, that's a likely candidate uh, for a, a serious request for support for this effort. Another is the Tourism Development uh, Grant is, is also something that uh, could be part of this as well. So when we say contributions and grants, it's really kind of a uh, a, a combination that will help us get to where we need to be. Uh, now, the residual, and it'd be nice if there weren't any residual. My guess is there will be. Uh, we've got to be prepared for there to be a residual. And how do we pay for the balance? Uh, the answer to that is the service charge. Uh, service charges are collected, and this is kind of the streets and street lights and storm water management and so forth, uh, the service charges will be an appropriate place for us to deal with that residual. And that's what I was talking about over a, 
a lengthy period of time, uh, a way to handle the balance that might be remaining. Now, currently, um, the service charge is uh, 35.6 cents uh, per $100 of property valuation. Uh, that's the current uh, millage rate for service charges. Uh, and to translate that a little bit, if you have a piece of property that's valued, has an assessed value of $200,000, uh, you multiply or divide it by 100 and then multiply it by uh, 35.6 cents, uh, you wind up paying a service charge of $712 per year. Um, and, and another way to state that is uh, every penny of a service charge translates into $21,400 in a year. Uh, Haywood County reassessed property recently. Surprisingly, surprising to me, the overall total value of property held, owned in, in the Lake Junaluska area went down. It was, uh, was $222 million assessed value. It, in this latest assessment, reassessment, it was $214 million in assessed value. And so that's where this, I mean, you can do the math, uh, a penny times 214 million gives you the $21,400 uh, over a 10-year uh, period of time. One penny would result in $214,000 of uh, of $214,000 of service charges, one penny would. Uh, now, in, in passing, you know, I think, that uh, Lake Junaluska, Inc. is a big property owner in the area, and Lake Junaluska pays the same uh, assessed rate as all of us that are property owners do. So, of that uh, $214,000 thousand dollars that would be one penny's worth over 10 years. Lake Junaluska is 15 or 16 percent of, of that um, and that's true for not only that one penny but any pennies that are uh, the assessed value. Um, so um, let's, let's do a little what ifs, a little uh, math. Suppose we needed a million dollars. Suppose the balance, after charitable contributions, after grants, suppose we needed a million dollars. Uh, what would it take in service charges to get that? Assuming the $214 million of assessed value didn't change for that whole 10-year period. The answer is a little less than five cents. Uh, millage of a little less than five cents. Now, uh, that's not bad. That's not bad, uh, but our story is better than that. Um, Assembly Public Works has done a terrific job. Uh, they've done a really good job of whacking away early at the things that needed to be done. They've also, more recently, kind of with the Community Council uh, urging them to properly match and uh, expenses with revenues and keep up. Uh, they, they've done a good job of um, having those uh, costs matched where they ought to be. And the result of that um, is we think Well, I've gone too many. We think that we can get to where we need to do without increasing the current level of service charges at all. Now, now, 
Now, we're not there yet, and it depends on a number of things happening, uh, and let's talk about what those might be and what the timeline would be. I've mentioned several times now the July 1 uh, meeting of the Board of Trustees. And it is again at that meeting that the Board will receive the final report from the task force. It will be at that meeting that uh, the Board will uh, issue uh, instructions to management, to administration, to implement uh, a grant seeking plan, a contribution seeking uh, plan, and that we go forward with the rest of the uh, efforts related to the task force recommendation. Our notion is this, we need to do this in a hurry. Uh, we need to be laser focused. We need to, between July 1 and the end of December this year, we need to get cash and we need to get pledges uh, to make this happen so we'll know what we're dealing with. So we know how much money has to be borrowed in order for the project to be completed. Now, what this also means is we need to begin the process of determining what the size or scope of the project is going to be. The biggest single thing that could happen, and if you want to put it on your prayer list, write it down now. The biggest single thing that could help us is if when we take the current road up, the wood and the concrete and all that stuff that's up in there, and we look at the I-beams, when we lower the water and we look at the concrete abutments, if we are pleasantly surprised and we don't have to do all of the things that John Garner and the engineering firm thinks we might have to do, uh, then instead of 1.7, the project is 1.4. I mean, we save $300,000 just on the scope of the project. So if you want to put something high on your prayer list, that would be a good thing. Um, the next part of it is in October, the board will meet at its regular meeting in October, Jimmy the Board of Trustees. And at that time, we'll have a much better idea of what the situation is and we'll have a final uh, go-forward uh, plan for this whole project. Now, what that would entail is around the first of the year, the water level will come down. And we'll be able to examine and determine pretty quickly what the status of the concrete abutments is, and therefore that's the final piece in knowing what's, what this project is likely to cost as a whole. When we meet at our March meeting, the Board of Trustees, we can then finalize the, the action plan for going forward uh, with the idea uh, that the bridge, all things work well, could be reopened, completed, project completed, reopened in the fall of 2018. Now that's a lot of things have to happen well in, in order, happen uh, like dominoes for this to happen. Now, what we've outlined here, what I'm trying to outline to you is um, a package. Uh, a lot of this stuff has to happen together on the front end and as we go through this. In, in other words, um, if, you, if you take a step back, the task force is currently, and I expect, uh, depending on what other input we get in the next week, I expect that the task force is going to continue to recommend that the bridge, the dam over the bridge, uh, be repaired for both vehicular and pedestrian traffic. Uh, I think part of that plan is we're going to raise as much money as we can. We're going to meet those matching things if we can. Um, and we're going to reduce the overall balance that will have to come 
uh, from service charges, uh, which is the third element of this. Um, the package is terrific. I mean, if you think about it, we've got the opportunity uh, collectively to respond to this in ways that uh, can really make this not painless, uh, but of as little pain as possible. For example, think about this. Think about this. There are about 800 homes, Ed, roughly. 800 homes. If every homeowner would write a check for $1,000 or make a pledge to pay $1,000 over a reasonable time period, or if that's not possible, if every homeowner would find some friend, somebody else that knows and loves Lake Junaluska, and get them to do it, in other words, be responsible for paying, pledging, or raising $1,000. Um, if that were to happen, we'd have $800,000. In addition to the matching funds, uh, we're there. We're there. So the challenge we've got, in my judgment, as a community, is can we understand that this is a package deal? It's got to all work together, and an important part of that working together is that we each do our part. Uh, now, my guess is there'll be some among the 800 homeowners that will be unable or unwilling to do any of that. They won't write a check, they won't make a pledge, and they won't get somebody else to do it. So we gotta make up for some that won't, won't be able to do that if we're gonna get to 800,000. So don't, don't hear me say I'm letting you off at 1,000. So, Here's the good news, and then I'm going to take your questions and comments. Here's the good news in my judgment. The good news is we've got a problem that is manageable. It may be a million seven problem. It could conceivably be two or three hundred thousand dollars less. We also might get contractors that are able and willing to do this job for less than that. Don't know, but that's a possibility. We know that we're going to seek grants, and we've got at least two ready uh, and should be willing candidates for receipt of those grant requests. We also know that we've got a significant challenge from both an organization and a foundation and family that totaled $300,000 already. Wow! That should encourage us as a community to dig a little deeper and accept the challenge to write a check, make a pledge, or find a friend. Uh, and if we do those things, then we won't have to, uh, we'll, we'll go a long way to being able to finance this thing much quicker than 10 years, and we'll be in good shape. But in the meantime, in the meantime, because of what Assembly Public Works has been able to do and what they can do in the future, uh, we will be able to go forward with this without increasing the service charge from what it currently is based on this project. Now, there may be things in the future that cause an increase. I mean, you're, don't hear me promise 10 years of level service charges. I mean, inflation is going to happen and other things may occur, but we can deal with this problem using time, and kind of the reallocation of some costs and expenses and putting them, frankly, where they ought to be uh, to begin with. So, 
This is a good news meeting, folks. This is a good news meeting. <clears throat> All right. What, what uh, questions do you have? We got a, a yeah a microphone. That's, thank a you, A thousand dollar. I'm sorry. A thousand dollar contribution is tax deductible. An increase in service charges is not. Is Bingo. That... Okay. <laughs> Absolutely. Think about it. Think about it. What do you think? I mean, can you nod ahead or something like that? I mean, I mean, I am so pumped about this. In Bill Lowry's book, as well as Mason Crumbs and all the others, the first South, uh, missionary conference held here in 1913 raised $152,000 in 1913 dollars. Bill, you want to tell them what that's worth now? Me too. Me too. <laughs> two, two million, uh, let me find the place in my stuff, two million nine hundred and four thousand seven hundred and six dollars and eleven cents and that was two thousand and five dollars twelve years later it's worth more than that we can do this this is a piece of cake compared to what our ancestors did for us we're like good boy scouts we inherited a good campsite our job is to make it a better one when we leave i think this also is an opportunity for this community to pull together in ways that will be important to us as we go forward. Uh, so the invitation that I would share with you is to think of it in those terms, perhaps. Yes, ma'am. Uh, this is probably a dumb question, but I think it's great. I love what I've heard today, but I want to be sure when you check out those abutments that are under the water, that no matter what condition they're in, hopefully it's good, but is it going to be good enough to last another 100 years? I'd rather pay more now than to pay this much money and yep. then have to do it again at some point. I doubt you're going to get any engineer to assure us that we've got 100 years uh, unless it's a really old engineer. <laughs> right. But, but, the bigger point you make, I think, is well made. We don't want to be uh, penny wise and pound foolish. If there are things that need to be done to make this safe, remember this, safety is a primary concern for us. That's the reason we closed the bridge to vehicular traffic in the first place. Uh, we need to make sure that the bridge is safe uh, above all else and we'll do that. That will be part of the charge that we get. Um, and, and it's a balancing act between what is safety and what is belts and suspenders, you know? Uh, and that'll be part of the judgment that we will be asking of the engineer uh, and of the contractor as we go forward. But great point, great point. I'm sorry? Will the state not being be expect Inspecting this, inspecting. I think yes, I think so. That'll be part of the process. Uh, and but I will say this to you: North Carolina is probably a heck of a lot better than Alabama. But if we were in Alabama, I would be pleased with a state inspection, but I would be relying more on what my engineer and my contractor told me. Uh, now I'm sure it's different in North Carolina, but not much. What else? Yes, way in the back. Uh, let, let Rob, it's good for him. He's trying to get his steps in. That's right. <clears throat> yeah, I was just wondering, um, has anyone considered crowdfunding on the Internet? Yes, we've, we've talked about that. And, you know, one of the things, and I think that could be a part of this. It can't be a part until we've got a project. Uh, so... Kind of, that's why you see July 1 to December 31. I think we can share, if we can share the details of a real project, we've got the opportunity to, for crowdfunding, 
we've also got the opportunity to reach out to these churches uh, and give them the opportunity to participate. Uh, how, what the yield will be, we don't know, but we won't know till we try. But that's why it's key that we have a project, and that's what July 1 is about. It's also key, I think, I think, in any kind of funding. I mean, I've done a lot of fundraising in the last 40 years. In any kind of fundraising, you've got to show a commitment before you ask somebody else for money. Uh, the $150,000 that Ann Warren's putting up is exactly that kind of thing. The $150,000 that we're hoping for from this other organization is exactly that. If those things become real, we can go for grants saying we're helping ourselves big time. If those things are real, we can go to crowdfunding and churches and the conferences and say, think about it, think about it. We're, not, we're helping ourselves, but we want you to give you the opportunity to participate as well. Uh, so absolutely, crowdfunding can be a part. And it'll be new. We've not done that before. Uh, but I can't think of a better uh, project or opportunity to introduce that sort of thing to. Heck, I want to put a little can at the entrance. <laughs> you know, put a dollar in. Uh, I want to give people that are walking around the lake from Waynesville, and there's some Waynesville people here, give you the opportunity to, you know, think about it. How many... How, Every mile, maybe you ought to give us $10 a mile, or $5 a mile, $1 a mile as you walk around. I mean, the sky's the limit. Yep, Ron? Is there a way to put divers in the water earlier than January to inspect the concrete? <clears throat> uh, we've talked about that. Um, and Jack Carlisle, divers in the water before January to check those abutments is a possibility. Um, what we've got to do here, here's the sequence. And, you know, I was in the, I was in the natural gas business, not the construction business, so take this for what it's worth. But the first thing we've got to do, and we need to do soon, by soon I mean right after the summer season here, we need to take that, that road uh, off the, the top of the dam to to see what we've got there. Depending on what we, that yields for us, we could consider moving up that inspection and not wait for the water line uh, down if, if we're on a roll there. Uh, Jack, help me, we had them looking at the gate, the divers look at the gate that was busted the, under the water. The <coughs> now he's gonna answer short. The answer is, uh, regarding the divers, that activity pertains to the gates that are, that are under, under the lake. That, that's the work that pertains to uh, uh, repairing one of the three gates. Uh, it, but to do that, uh, ultimately, it's going gonna, it's gonna to involve lowering the lake. And it, simultaneously with that, we'll be able to do all of the examination associated with the concrete abutments. One of the things that drives about when to lower the lake, number one is we have a permit from the Army Corps of Engineers that only allows us to uh, lower the lake at certain times of the year. So we're constrained by that on the front end. The other consideration is the business picture of, of the Lake Junaluska Conference Center. If you're coming here, seeing the lake is part of the, part of the reason that you come. And, uh, and not not seeing uh, not seeing the lake would certainly be impactful uh, as it relates to that. So 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 you know we're sensitive to the times of year when we can lower the lake based on that criteria. The, you know the other thing I'd say, and this is we're we're making some of this up. Remember this. I mean I mean we don't know. I said earlier we don't know what we don't know yet, uh, and that's true for the the surface. Uh, of the uh, road across the bridge across the dam it's, uh, it's clearly true for underneath once we get a plan and get started we can engage a contractor too that will help us refine this timetable and we've got an aggressive timetable here 
that has this project being done in less than 12 months uh, and has us disrupting uh, really only one summer. Uh, and as we go forward, if we get the word that our timeline is too aggressive because you're waiting too long to check underneath the surface, we'll explore some alternatives. But at this point, based on the d advice we've gotten from the engineer, we think this is a, is a realistic, though aggressive, uh, timetable. Um, I mean that, but it's there. It's not, uh, you know, it's not a black and white, right or wrong. It's we're going to need some more information, and then we'll be able to revise the plan if we need to going forward. The encouraging thing to me is that we've got a timetable now, an expected timetable that uh, really looks good. I mean, the idea of having this project from uh, letting a contract to finish in less than 12 months is very encouraging to me. Yes? Um, I'm a, home, a homeowner as well, and I have a little bit different perspective that I'd like to share. If it's in the minority, that's fine. Yep. Um, it seems to me that building the pedestrian bridge would be, while $750,000 is nothing to sneeze at, it would be fairly easy to raise given the scenario that you've projected. Um, June Luska has lost value on their property. I think it's a little bit overly optimistic to assume that service charges are not going to reflect that fact down the road. The other thing that I will say is that pedestrian use seems to be the most, the, the use that's the, the most pressing. Um, the vehicular traffic is, there seem to be other ways around it. It's worked pretty well in the time that it's been closed. I don't know about other people, but I have enjoyed not having the local teenagers circling the lake over and over and over and over with their loud radios and that kind of thing. So, I mean, I feel like our service charges are already really high, and it seems really optimistic to assume that they're not going to go up. So I would be in favor of having a pedestrian bridge. Uh, that's, that was part of the discussion we had April 1 and part of the input uh, that we had at that time. I'll tell you this, when I said this was a package, uh, the contribution that the Warren Family Foundation and Mike and Ann Warren are willing to make is to the entire project, not to a pedestrian bridge. Um, it's a package, at least for us. I don't know about this other organization that's willing to put up $150,000 toward a $1.7 million project. I'm not at all sure they would put up $150,000 toward a $750,000 project, but your comments are the kinds of comment we need to hear and for the task force to consider before making a final uh, recommendation. Yeah, Tim. Uh, Tim Phelan, 48 Hoosier Court. Um, Seconding what I just heard that uh, uh, lady uh, address, and that was at that April meeting, it certainly seemed to be the most popular option would be going and making that a walking bridge, which would be a $750,000 estimated repair. Um, secondly, is what is CJAC's involvement in this, given that they own the lake, the dam, um, and from what I've seen in print, uh, it would include the bridge over the dam. So uh, what is CJAC's involvement? And the third is what is that estimated dollar figure that has been freed up from uh, APW uh, that would apply? Uh, I'm sorry, what's the last part? I'm not APW, you mentioned APW, that mm -hmm. there'd, be there'd be monies available uh, from APW by repurposing expenses. Um, something to that effect, but there's a dollar figure that you must have in mind that would be coming from existing service fees that are being repurposed. The, uh, so somebody else, Jack Ewing, where are you? You may be able to help me better on CJAC. Um, um, the United Methodist Church, southeastern jurisdiction of the United Methodist Church has made it crystal clear to us that they are not going to be providing funds for infrastructure improvement to Lake Junaluska going forward. Um, when CJAC existed, which was the Southeastern Jurisdiction Administrative Council, 
Um, that, that existed during a period from 1988 to 2008. That ended in 2008. And while the United Methodist Church of the Southeastern Jurisdiction is listed as the owner of Lake Junaluska, it's the, it's the same kind of ownership as uh, the jurisdiction has for Emory University. Southeastern Jurisdiction owns Emory University, but Emory University does not expect the Southeastern Jurisdiction to build a new building for them. Um, and so w it's been real clearly communicated to us that uh, our source of funding can come from individuals within the jurisdiction or potentially from individual churches within the jurisdiction but the jurisdiction itself no longer has resources that are allocated in their apportionment for the purpose of supporting entities like Lake Junaluska. There are a few of us that it owns, uh, Lake Junaluska Assembly, Hinton Rural Life Center down in Western North Carolina, and, and then Gulfside Assembly in, in Mississippi. Thanks, Jack. So we're gonna give them individually and church-wise, churches, the opportunity to participate, but we do not anticipate any help from uh, the old uh, southeastern jurisdiction. You know, in the older days, they used to give us a million dollars a year toward operating costs, and a number of years ago, they said, we're not doing that anymore, and they aren't. We get zero from them for operating costs uh, from the, yeah. First, let me make a statement before I raise the question, which right. might sound like cold water in the project. I support it as a capital standalone project. I will do my share and hopefully be able to do more to finance the bridge project. But my question is, does the trustees or anyone have a plan for dealing with the other serious transportation problems that we have by growth at Lake Junaluska? For instance, we have one lane streets paved between major connected streets that are two lane. And th as houses are built on these, there's heavy traffic on these one lane streets. And I really would hesitate on seeing the street budget cut back to support the dam pro bridge over the dam. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, until there's a clear plan for dealing with streets like Branscombe Drive that uh, borders my property, doesn't bother me, but two Japanese compact cars can't pass without one almost getting in the ditch. You have a service truck, and more and more now service trucks are using these kinds of streets. So my question is, does the trustees or anyone have a plan for dealing with other serious street problems before we start cutting back on street budget for the bridge over the dam. Does that make sense? I didn't mean to make a... Do you want a brief answer? What? Do you want a brief answer? <laughs> there is no written plan in place in terms of widening streets at Lake Junaluska. That's the bottom line. I can walk around that with several paragraphs, but at the end of the story, there is no written plan. Uh, in fact, one of the conversations I was having with Mike before our meeting today is that you know, we, we have community plans in place. Those are LakeJunalaskaCommunity.com. Those plans are there. You can read through them. There have been things that we've talked about all along. And um, the scope of those plans does not currently include widening streets at Lake Junaluska. Is it a need? George makes a good point. It is a need. And uh, we do have new houses going up at Lake Junaluska, uh, thank goodness, as we continue to grow. Is it, uh, is it at a pace that's, you know, that's frightening in terms of the need to widen streets at, you know, today? Well, of course we can use the convenience of wider streets. Uh, but uh, at this point, the scope of widening streets is not included in our community plans. Whoops. And, and perhaps the rest of the answer ought to be, if that is something that, the, that needs to happen, we need to understand what it would cost, what the priorities would be, 
than how we would go about uh, financing it. But at this point, it's not there. I mean, you, so your point is well taken. Yeah. 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 Uh, Jack, do you want to touch that base too? Incidentally, one of the reasons that Tom McLaughlin's legs were fourth in priority list <laughs> has now been paraded in front of you several times. Uh, Jack, go ahead. Okay. The bridge over the dam is among the many priority needs that are established for our community overall. We've got a water sewer plan, and you know we're working in that direction with, with that. We have a community plan in place for roads and streets. As we continue to talk in community council, over time, our priorities have shifted because you know there are, there are uh, needs that that. Uh, for instance, in water and sewer that arise that cause us to shift over and take care of that issue versus another issue that was earlier identified as critical. I've got a list of them all. And uh, what happens when uh, circumstances cause us to change our priorities uh, is that we, we shift our priorities. And uh, so, as you align, as you as you line up what it is that we're going to be doing near term in the future, um, the bridge has gone from being kind of a clackety clack pain, and we we you know we we got it uh, resolved partially with uh, our basically no cost uh, rubber mats over the top, to all of a sudden being the top priority in the streets area. So th that's how it became that, and and we will continue to. To, to shift our capital planning priorities to address those at a speed at which the, the, there's money in the bank to address them. And, and Jack, part of that too is over the last two and a half years, uh, you've been able to stretch those dollars and accomplish a, a lot of those priorities uh, a lot better and quicker than we thought initially possible. Yes, that's, we, we Uh, I'm not sure how to answer that question, e except that when we, you know, w when we do our budget work, we have operational expenses, we have the service charges that are coming in. The difference is the money that's available to address the priority of the day. The priority of the day has shifted to the bridge over the dam as it relates to service charges expenditures. Yeah. I mean, it's as simple as that. So, so uh, maybe I can uh, add, add a little uh, to, to Jack's answer as well. Um, you know, of the 35.6 cents that we collect for service charges, it's, it's paying for a variety of things. It's paying for operations. When we increased the service charge, I, I believe it was in 2012 or 13, we, we've had two increases during the time that I've been in this role as executive director was originally 27 something went to 32 something now it's 30 it was 30 it was actually 35 and a quarter we increased it to 35.6 based on a uh, inflationary factor last year um, but what we have been able to do in the process is to look at how that 35.6 cents has been allocated for funds that are available um, one of the things that you know, Tim, from your work on the Community Council, is a strong desire on the part of the Community Council for have, having expenses allocated to where they are appropriately to be placed. One of the things that Jack shared both at the May Community Council meeting as well as at the June Community Council meeting is that um, there were administrative costs, particularly to the water and sewer system, that were being covered by service charges. Um, and when we established a totally separate, segregated water and sewer account, 
we wanted to make certain, based on the counsel of both the community council as well as the board of trustees, that we actually both collect the funds specifically for water and sewer and we spend the funds for water and sewer. So part of the money that has been freed up for increasing the streets portion of the 35.6 cents is shifting administrative costs that Jack talked about in May and June at the Community Council from uh, the service charge revenues over to the streets, I mean to the s water and sewer part. Yes, there was, there, w as you know, we've, uh, with our new security arrangement with Haywood County Sheriff, and particularly shifting from having Mike Schuler, who was a full-time employee as the chief, to having Chris Moody as a, a part-time employee, but still covering the same responsibilities, we had some modest cost savings uh, from that perspective. So we, we have, through appropriate reallocation of, of resources, actually found some additional resources. It just, and again, as Mike pointed out, looking forward, there are gonna be a lot of factors that are gonna change. Um, and certainly to commit to, as Mike said, keeping the service charge at 35.6 cents for the next 10 years would be foolish uh, to do. It'd be wonderful if we could lower it, but uh, don't wanna make a commitment to, to keeping it at, at that level. Um, but right now in this projected budget, there's about 10 cents of that 35.6 cents that's available for roads. Remember there was uh, 4.6 to, to raise a million dollars of funds over a 10 year period of time from, a, uh, f from, our, from our service charges, it would take 4.67 cents. Um, so less than half of the money that's available for streets, uh, George's question about it, well, we, you know, we don't wanna abandon doing other improvements to streets. Uh, we'd love, by the way, George, we'd love to wide widen the streets, but I'm not sure how many property owners would be willing to give up their property to yeah, it, 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 the, there, there certainly are some, as everybody knows about Lake Junaluska, there are challenges with narrow streets b designed in, in 1913. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Uh, on some, in some places, not everywhere, unfortunately. <laughs> Sure. Wait, get, up, get the microphone. Wait, 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 just get the microphone so everybody can hear you. I don't really want to be a fragment in this because I support. Suppose a donor wanted to give you $50,000 as a capital grant to widen Branscombe Drive. Do you have a plan to accept it and implement it? Point made, thank you. Thank you, <clears throat> thank you, Rex Taylor, new seasonal resident. Um, question on the, when the, I know you're in the process of doing continued evaluation. Uh, when the um, engineers take, get part of the deck off and take a look at the structural I-beams that come across, will they do a cost-benefit analysis on repair versus replacement? Yeah. Yes, we think so. And the, uh, that will be really part one of the further investigation that needs to happen with the second part, final part being the examination of the concrete abutments uh, under the water. And collectively, uh, I mean, the difference between 1.4 and 1.7 is really, um, revolves around the 
what we may find in both of those inspections. So it's significant, uh, but it's not a, I mean, we've got the opportunity for it to be as much as a $300,000 benefit to the project, and we won't know really until we get, and I don't have, Rex, a breakdown in mind about how much would be concrete and how much would be I-beams, um, but collectively it's about three, their estimate is $300,000. Yes, ma'am. Whitfield Way is one of those narrow streets, <coughs> half of it, and the traffic since the bridge has closed has at least tripled. It, we were doing fine with a narrow street, so I want the bridge reopened. It will help our traffic problem. Oh. Thank you. Oh, good. I, it's it's important, Rob. That we, oh oh, you want to go there we'll first? Go we'll, we'll, we'll wait on you so Rob doesn't have to run. <laughs> Ron Clauser, I just wanted to uh, compliment the you and the trustees, and the leadership that's been given to a project that came up that was unexpected, and uh, appreciate it being caught before there was damage done to anybody or any piece of property. I uh, wanted to say that I would prefer that uh, service fees would be tax deductible also, but I would also say that I feel I get a fair value for the service fee I pay, and I would and I would be willing to pay an additional service fee if it were necessary to complete this project because the dam is something that we look back. It's part of the history. We need to honor the history. It's part of the present assessment, and we need to secure the future. And I think this is a way of doing it, and I appreciate your leadership and your generosity in what you're proposing. Come on down front. <clears throat> Come on down front, and I'll kiss you on both cheeks. Uh, Roger Dowdy, seasonal uh, resident here, and I, I would echo that previous statement wholeheartedly. It's been a wonderful presentation today. Uh, one revenue stream, I just suggest it may have already been considered, but if not, uh, as I register for events in other locations and uh, subscribe, there's always, when at the bottom when I register, mm -hmm. there's make, an make a contribution yeah, to yeah. this event or above your <coughs> registration. And so as uh, my role here some years ago for six years was director of ministry events, and so I know about the passion of people who come here on a regular basis and to give them an opportunity to add most of what I see is a $40 it can be less than that but most of the registration online will give you a $40 option to start with and to add to your registration yeah and and that's uh, thank you that's a terrific thing um, and Ken you're not in the back uh, children's hospital I'm, I'm, I'm the CEO of Ch children's of Alabama uh, the acute care children's hospital in the state of Alabama. And we, through Walmart, get more than a million dollars every year, one dollar at a time. Not from Walmart, the company, but from Walmart customers. Because when you go into Walmart, wherever you are, uh, you're given the opportunity to give a dollar. Would you be willing to give an extra dollar? Uh, for Children's of Alabama or Children's Miracle Network, they call it, and it's they're geographically divided. So it's a great. I mean, we need to exhaust opportunities to give people the opportunity to participate. We're going to have to do it quickly, uh, and we've got to have a project to to have them focus on something. Just a quick tag to what you just <coughs> said is to give uh, Waynesville and Hayward County retail merchants that option. Yeah, and they've got I've a listen, dollar customer. We went. Um, you go to Mass General Store right there by the uh, cash register. They've got three or four or five different, I mean, uh, opportunities to put a dollar in the Humane Society or this, this or that. So, and we may not raise very much money that way, but the visibility and the publicity is worthwhile, in my judgment, and that's part of what we will be talking about too. All right, we've had a really good meeting. Anybody got one more question? Uh, can I thank you very much for your input and for the, uh, your willingness to come out on what we thought was going to be a really rainy day uh, to care about this community. And the final thing I would say to you is 
if we look on this as both a challenge and an opportunity, uh, a challenge for us as a community, but also an opportunity for us as a community to come together uh, quickly around something that is important not only currently, but I think important to the future of Lake Genalusta uh, for the next number of decades. Uh, I think we'll all stand a little taller and puff our chest out just a little bit more uh, when we accomplish this. Much is yet to be determined, but we are off to a terrific start. Thank you again for being here, and War Eagle.